Hello everyone, in this video we will discuss about balancing. So while designing a machine, we take into account factors such as the kinematics, the forces, the moments which are acting from input to output in such a way that all the links of the machine, they are able to endure the forces exerted upon them in such a way that the frame which is supposed to be fixed is not subjected to any types of forces and moments. Because if the frame is subjected to any type of unbalanced forces or moments, it will lead to vibrations and it will produce sound, right? Whenever machines are moving, these forces which are acting on the frame, they are usually time varying. That means they are dynamic in nature. Therefore, it can also lead to distortion and the decremental effect, sorry, detrimental effects on the foundation of the machine and its structure as well as the performance. So, whenever we are designing a machine, we have to keep into account that the forces acting on the frame should be equal to, sorry, they should be equal to zero. In case if this condition is not satisfied, now see what happens whenever you're designing a machine, we are doing theoretical work. But when we come to the field, when we start operating the machine, there may be cases where there are vibrations. There may be cases when the forces in a system are not balanced. So what are the types of unbalances and how they can be fixed that we'll study in this whole chapter. And we'll talk about these unbalances in brief in this video. So what are the possible types of unbalances that can be created? One is the rotating type of unbalance which happens in case of the rotating systems or the rotating links. So the unbalances and rotating links is because of the inertia forces and these inertia forces which is basically the centrifugal force which is acting downwards now it keeps on changing. Because the direction is always changing, so this force is dynamic in nature and it keeps on changing its value. Therefore, it is not good for the frame to have any imbalance because of the rotating paths. Second is the reciprocating unbalance. Even though they are having the translatory motion, in this case, we are talking about a reciprocating part or a piston which, is, which has zero offset. That means the translatory motion is happening in the line of stroke of the crank, right? So there are two imbalances. In case of the rotating bodies, usually the problem of unbalanced forces is faced and these forces are produced when center of mass, which we are denoting by G, it does not lie on the axis of rotation of the shaft. So let's say there is a shaft which is fixed to some bearings or uh, some support and it has got some body, some rotating body on it, which is rotating with the same angular velocity as the shaft. So in first case, we have taken an irregular shape and in second case, we have taken a regular disc. Now see, in first case, we see that the center of mass is lying at certain distance E, which is called as eccentricity from the axis of rotation. Now because this G is not lying on axis of rotation, it will have unbalanced forces. But in second case, you see it is not necessary that only the symmetry or geometry, it decides the position of the center of mass. There may be other reasons due to which they, uh, there may be some small misalignment or there may be some error in the system due to which G does not lie on the axis of rotation. That means these rotating bodies have got some unbalanced forces in them and these unbalanced forces are what? The inertia forces or the radially acting outwards centrifugal force which is denoted by me omega square now whenever we are solving the questions of unbalance rather than making a diagram like this we usually prefer making diagrams like this in which this is the rotor right and this whole disc is reduced to a point mass which is denoted like this at certain distance r right so this is the notation or this is the diagrammatic representation which we'll be using further. Now what can be done when there is imbalance? We say that when center of mass is not lying on the axis of rotation, there is imbalance in a rotating body, right? So the possibility of balancing the unbalance is by doing is in two ways. One 
is either by redistribution of already existing masses. But now see when the machine is already made, it is already set and it is not possible to change the masses and again bring new parts and set them. So it is not possible. The second option is the introduction of some counter masses. Introduction of counter masses means that if there is some imbalance in the system, we place a mass in such a way that the imbalance force produced because of the already existing mass is counterbalanced by the new mass which we have introduced and in this way we can reduce the detrimental effects of the inertia or the imbalance forces. So in first case you see there is this mass M1 and its center of mass is lying on the axis of rotation but still this is an unbalanced uh, this mass is producing an unbalanced force. So to balance this what we can do we can place a mass at the same axis in such a way that the centrifugal force produced by this is balanced by this new mass. So what happens the unbalance is balanced and the, the resultant force on this body becomes zero. So this type of balancing is known as the static balancing where the center of mass lies on the axis of rotation and what we have to balance is only the unbalanced forces. Now look at the second case if let's say there is this mass M1 which is producing an unbalanced uh, force, a centrifugal force which is acting radially outwards and to balance this what we do we introduce two masses at these two different places in such a way that M1 is equal to M2 plus M3. So what happens the forces are balanced right forces balanced because the force produced by this M1 is equal to force produced by M2 and M3. But what happens because these masses are not lying at the same axis the couple is generated in the system which is not desirable. This is again a, an unbalanced couple. So to balance the couple also we have to introduce let's say one more mass and this mass is introduced in such a way that if initially the couple was in clockwise direction the introduction of this new mass it produces couple in counterclockwise direction in such a way that both of them are balanced or they nullify the effect of each other. So for this method of balancing is known as the dynamic balancing in which we balance forces as well as the couples or the moments produced in the system. So balancing of reciprocating parts in system is done to balance the disturbing effects of unbalanced forces produced because of the inertia. And we already know that in case of a reciprocating body or in case of any body inertia is always acting in the direction opposite to that of the motion of the body. So in case of a slider crank mechanism if crank is moving in this direction the acceleration is in this direction and inertia force it acts in this direction right along the line of stroke. So to balance this what we do we can add a counter mass here opposite to the crankshaft at this position right and it is added in such a way that the horizontal component it balances the the horizontal component of this counter mass it balances the inertia force which is produced because of the reciprocating bodies but it also produces a vertical component which, which produces another type of unbalance or imbalance in the system. Therefore, we usually balance a fraction of reciprocating parts in the system. We do not balance 100% unbalance produced because of the reciprocating parts because 100% balancing or the complete balancing of this unbalanced force produces a new unbalanced force which tends to move this crank up and down the system which we do not want. Therefore, to reduce the effect of this vertical force which is uh, created because of the counter mass we always balance a fraction of the reciprocating parts.